Welcome back to another episode of This Week on Channel 9. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Cloud Advocate. And this week, the hoodie I'm wearing is Care of the New Create Startups Tour. So last week, we kicked off the tour in New York City and Toronto, and it was a great event series. And so links to the Create Startups website and the upcoming tour dates are in the links down below. And I'm not sure what other stops I'm going to be at, but if you see me, please say hello. In other event news, we're just weeks away from Microsoft Build 2019, our flagship developer conference. And so it's going to be at the Washington State Convention Center in Seattle from May 6th through 8th, 2019. And I'm going to be there along with a bunch of your Channel 9 favorites doing the whole Build Live thing. So uh, please say hello if you see me. And registration info is linked below too, along with some fun videos that we've been making around town showing off the best places to eat and drink near the Convention Center. And finally, we are wrapping up the first year of Microsoft Ignite, the tour. And so I'm actually going to be in Stockholm next week, and then I will be in Mumbai at the end of May. And so if you're at either of those events, as always, please say hello. And links to the tour are down below. Now, in some massive, massive uh, dev news that broke last week, but I, I wanted to be sure to highlight this week, the first insider versions of the brand new Microsoft Edge web browser based on Chromium are now available for Windows 10. And so last year, the Edge team announced that it was going to be moving to a new browser rendering engine using the open source uh, base of Chromium. And, and that's what powers Chrome, uh, the Google Chrome's browser and a lot of other web browsers too. And so that was going to be used to build the next version of Microsoft Edge. And and look, like I know that there's been some confusion and some fear and maybe in a little bit of frustration about that change. I personally think that it's a very good thing. I, I'm not like into a whole monoculture rendering engine thing, but I think this is going to be good. Um, but now the first developer and testing builds are available to the public for Windows 10. And so this is not going to replace the Microsoft Edge, um, the old version that's on your system. And, and you can also install uh, these, uh, both the Dev and the Canary channel releases side by side. And so Canary releases are updated daily, and the Dev releases are updated every week and, and are going to be a little bit more stable. Um, I've got some links in the notes down below to some blog posts and some GitHub pages explaining some of the new stuff, but I really encourage anybody who's interested to check this out. I've been using um, uh, Ed, the new Edge on Windows 10 for a couple of months, and it, it just keeps getting better and better. Uh, versions for Mac and older Windows versions um, are going to be coming soon. Oh, and I've also got a link down below that shows off how you can enable the dark mode in Windows 10. So right now, this isn't enabled by default just yet, but uh, you can still do it in the settings, and it, it looks fantastic. It's one of the my favorite features, like the, the dark mode is so good. Let me know what you think about the new OSS Microsoft Edge browser in the comments. And if you're into any issues while testing it out, be sure to let the team know your feedback on their pages and their forums. So it's April, and here at Microsoft, we love alliteration. So we started a whole new series over in the Dev.2 community called Azure April. And so this is where we are sharing some fresh technical content alongside some of our favorite Azure tips and tricks from Michael Crump to the Dev.2 audience. And so links are down below, and you can check out all the articles, really fun stuff. Um, and speaking of Michael Crump, he is continuing to pump out great tips and tricks all the time, including a new one about getting started with Azure Front Door, which launched just a couple of weeks ago. And so I've got a link to that in the show notes down below. In some Azure storage news, Jason Gaylord has a really great blog post up about how to publish a static content using Azure Blob Storage. And I've got that linked below. So if, if you're interested in figuring that out, check it out. Um, also, if you've got uh, data in Amazon S3 buckets and you'd like to migrate those over to Azure, the latest version of AZ Copy version 10, and that's now in preview, supports just that. And so check out the show notes for more information and a link to the AZ Copy v10 preview. So one of my favorite projects is Chocolatey, and it's basically a package manager for Windows, and it's really great for making your dev machines, like getting them set up really quickly. And uh, Gary um, on the Chocolatey team recently started a Twitter thread about the various processes of maintaining various GitHub projects and repositories. And so when a project goes from being maybe like a pet project to being used by lots of people, sometimes that can mean that the structure of how it's maintained might need to be updated too. And so Gary made some changes to how the Chocolatey project works, including a couple of new GitHub organizations. And I've linked to his uh, blog post to kind of show um, in the show notes uh, for more 
more details. And this offers, I think, some really good food for thought for any OSS developer out there because it really shows like what that project is doing and what you might want to think about. Over on Channel 9 this week, we've got a brand new episode of One Dev Minute, as well as Azure Dev um, Ops Lab. So check both of those out. And I want to give a huge shout out to the Xamarin team for their brand new Xamarin Developers YouTube page. So you're still going to see their content on the main Channel 9 site, but if you want to subscribe to that content directly, they've got a new revived YouTube channel for just that. So congrats to all of them. Be sure to subscribe to their channel. And finally, some big PowerShell news broke last week. So the next version of PowerShell Core is not going to be called PowerShell Core 6.3, but it's dropping the core name, and it's going to be dubbed PowerShell 7. And so the team goes into the reasons for the name and versioning changes in a blog post that I've linked to down below. But really, this is all about uh, kind of removing the confusion um, around, I guess, the brand and focusing efforts on letting everybody use the best version of PowerShell. And so whether that's you know, Mac or Windows or Linux, it's all PowerShell. You can automate and do things and be powerful on the same, uh, you know, on whatever platform you want to be on. But even better, the PowerShell team is committed to making sure that PowerShell 7 is going to have all the features that the old PowerShell 5.1 had for Windows devs so that you don't have to worry about kind of, you know, going back and forth between the two. The first preview build is expected uh, in May, and we are going to keep you posted. And now it's time for my pick of the week. So, Despite working at Microsoft, I'm not necessarily the target customer for the new Service Hub 2S. But man, do I want one in our conference rooms like tomorrow. So the Surface Hub was already a really great conference room tool, um, especially for collaboration. And the new model looks even better. It basically has like a Windows 10 PC inside. And, and I want it. You can, you can draw on things, share screens, have lots of meetings. It's 4K. It's awesome. Let me know your thoughts on the Surface Hub 2S and all the other stories we discussed today in the comments. And if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button for me. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe to Microsoft Developer on YouTube for all your nerdy, nerdy dev goodness. See you next time.